Onyx is a freeware utility that allows you to customize a lot of the options that you would normally use Terminal for. In addition, it also has some utilities and maintenance scripts that might make your Mac work that little bit better. Onyx is available from Titanium Software. I recommend Googling for this, but don't use the first hit that pops up. Instead, go directly to the developer's website. Once you've loaded the website, click the download button and then select Onyx and then select the version of Onyx you require. This will depend on the version of OS X you're running, so make sure you download the correct one for the version you already have. Once Onyx is downloaded, open up the DMG file and then drag the Onyx application to the desktop. For more permanent use, drag the application to the Applications or Utilities folder. If you're running Mountain Lion, you may receive a message telling you you can't open it because it's from an unidentified developer. This is part of the Gatekeeper feature of OS X Mountain Lion, of which you can find some information within this tutorial for a previous tutorial that we have on Gatekeeper. To disable Gatekeeper, open up System Preferences, go to Security and Privacy, unlock the Preference pane by clicking the Padlock button, and then Allow Applications Downloaded From Anywhere. Confirm that you wish to do this, and then close System Preferences. Now try and open Onyx again, and you'll be able to open up the application properly. Onyx will require you to enter an administrator name and password. A lot of the utilities and maintenance performed by Onyx require administration rights. It will only prompt you for this once for the duration you have Onyx open. Once you launch Onyx, it will ask you to check the smart status of your hard drive. This is a preliminary measure, but it allows it to check if your hard drive is seeing any signs of failure. You may receive a message saying smart status not supported. You are likely to see this if you are running a Mac with a built-in SSD. For example, the Mac I'm running on is a MacBook Air, so there is no smart status. This is something that's applicable to mechanical drives only. Onyx is very easy to use, but it's also very powerful, so any mistakes could cause some problems with your computer. Before proceeding with Onyx, it's always recommended, as well as using any other applications, to keep a regular backup. In addition, please read the help file with Onyx before you proceed. Onyx is broken up into these categories. Each of them have their own specific task and may or may not run any extra utilities. Select Verify and you will be able to see more information about the smart status that was run when the application launched. Under Structure of Volume, this checks the volume or partition of the Mac. This will make sure that your startup volume has no problems. Verifying the volume can take up to 20 minutes, so it's worth leaving the Mac to it whilst it performs this check. As you can see, the volume has been verified as OK. If any errors were presented, you would need to boot from the Mac's recovery partition and run Disk Utility to repair the volume. The Preferences tab checks the physical preference files or plist files that you may see scattered throughout your Mac. This checks them to make sure they're not damaged in any way and they all verify correctly. Damaged preference file can cause any number of problems, from an application not launching to an application not being able to save certain settings correctly. Under the Maintenance tab, we have some options to actually verify and repair some system permissions. This is the same as running repair permissions within Disk Utility. Again, just like verifying the volume, this can take some time to run. Here we can see some permission problems. If we look through the log, we can see that it has verified, found errors with permissions, but also been able to repair them as well. Onyx allows you to reset your home directory permissions and access control lists. If you found you've been getting access denied messages for opening certain files within your home folder, 
chances are enabling this option and running it will allow you to fix that problem. One of the many ways your Mac takes care of itself is running certain scripts at predefined times. Your Mac actually has some daily, weekly and monthly automatic scripts to maintain itself. Sometimes these scripts cannot be run. Your Mac may be switched off or you may have it in standby mode. Occasionally your Mac will just try and run it the next time. However, sometimes your Mac may not run these for months on end. Onyx allows you to forcibly run these scripts. You can run either the daily, weekly or monthly scripts independently or all together. In addition, Onyx allows you to view the log files of the scripts once they've completed. The rebuild option has some certain settings that allows you to rebuild some OS X databases that run behind the scenes. Launch services is what controls what applications open your documents. For example, if you have a .doc document, by default you will probably have Microsoft Office to open it. Launch services is the service that runs in the background that maintains this link. Occasionally, you may find your applications are doubled up in the open with menu, or certain applications just don't open documents correctly. You can fix this by resetting the launch services. The DYLD shared cache is something that goes quite beyond the scope of this tutorial, as it's something that is quite complex to explain. However, Onyx will only have the default options ticked if it recommends it's safe to do so. You can always untick the DYLD shared cache if you don't want to rebuild it. Just like with some of the previous maintenance scripts, you can tick all of these or some of these and then hit the execute button. It will then run each of these one by one. In the cleaning tab, we have the option to delete the temporary caches that the Mac has. These cache files are created to increase performance, such as making your computer boot quicker. However, sometimes they can become troublesome and occasionally do need to be cleaned out. Although not very obvious, CUPS is actually related to the print system within your Mac, so this would clear out any temporary job files and any old log files. This is quite good to do as sometimes these can take quite a lot of space. Cache files take up a lot of space over time, so whilst it's great that we clear them out, the Mac still needs cache files to work. So the next time you restart your Mac, you might find it takes that little bit longer to boot up. Don't worry, it's rebuilding some of the temporary cache files that it would normally use, but without all the extra clutter. Once Onyx has completed the task, it will prompt you to restart your Mac. You don't have to do it at this stage, but it's recommended to restart as soon as possible. In the user tab, you will see some more cache files that can be deleted. Again, you can execute these tasks and then restart your Mac when completed. Under the internet tab, you will have other caches that relate to your internet and network connection. This also includes Safari's cache and browser history as well. Clearing the font cache is something that is recommended if you're experiencing issues using fonts. For example, you may find certain fonts will crash a program, or you might even find certain fonts don't render correctly. You may think of log files as just a bunch of text files the Mac has created over time. This is actually true, however, these files can grow to enormous sizes. Unless you have any reason to keep them, it's recommended to clear them every now and again. 
Onyx also allows you to clear some recent items in applications like Calculator or Mail. The items in the Mail Downloads folder can actually take up quite a lot of space depending on how many attachments you receive, and it's often recommended to clear that out once in a while. If you've spent any time within Terminal, you may wonder what else certain commands can do. There is a utility called man which you can type in the terminal that will explain any command you enter. However, Onyx will allow you to access this without having to load up terminal. Under the find tab, we can use the terminal version of Spotlight. This will allow us to find any file or folder on the hard drive. However, the database isn't usually created by default. OS X prefers to use Spotlight instead. Visibility is a useful tab within Onyx. It allows you to hide or show volumes, files and folders. If you have a specific folder that you want to make hidden for any reason, you can do this within Onyx. The same will also apply to any file or hard drive. Now remember, once you hide a file, by default you won't be able to see it in the finder unless you specifically know where it is and how to access it. So use this carefully. OS X stores resource data and metadata inside a special file called the DS store. This you may find clutters up USB sticks and network volumes if you use a mixed environment such as a Windows computer or a Linux computer. Onyx will allow you to remove these files if necessary. Package files that are installed on your Mac keep a receipt file. This explains which folders and files were added to your Mac. Onyx will let you open these receipt files so you can see what certain package installed which files. There are certain applications in OS X that don't reside in the Applications or Utilities folder. Onyx allows you to access these. You will also be able to keep these in the dock should you wish to. The automation tab actually runs through everything that we've used before, however it will do this systematically, so you don't have to click on each tab one by one and hit execute. You can simply click automation, execute, and then all the options that you've selected will automatically be performed. Onyx allows you to access many of the preferences that you may have set through the terminal previously. For example, you can set where you would like your screenshots to be set, and also their file type. The archive utility in OS X does actually have preferences, and you can access the preference pane using Onyx. Clicking Archives Install Preference pane will allow you to access some of the additional options that you might otherwise never have seen before. If you feel your Mac needs a workout and will lack an animated background, you can actually set any of the default screensavers as your desktop background. While these animated backgrounds do look pretty, they do use up a lot of resources. It's really not recommended to use these. You are also able to set the default path for screenshots, so if you use screenshots regularly and would like them not to stay on your desktop, you can specify the path to wherever you wish.
In addition, you can specify the naming convention, so instead of screenshot and then the date and time, you can have it named Mac and then the date and time. You can specify many other formats for screen capture, however PNG is still the best one to use. There are many, many preferences that you can set, so I'm not going to bore you by going through each one individually. Instead, we'll just go through a few of the options and best ones. Here we can tell the finder to show hidden files instead. As you can see, as soon as the finder restarted, I have two files on my desktop that weren't there before. Another option we have is customizing the finder's file menu. Here we can see that show eject and show burn to disk are enabled by default. Since I have a MacBook Air with no SuperDrive, it doesn't make sense to have burn to disk, so I'm going to disable this and let the finder restart. Now if I click on the finder's file menu, you should see that the burn to disk option has been removed. If I did have a Mac with a SuperDrive, it wouldn't make sense to have an eject menu icon. This would allow me to easily eject the CD tray without using the keyboard. Onyx can allow you to customize the locking screen. You can customize the default background, which is usually the linen pattern, you can even customise the Apple logo and a special message within the login screen. You can customise your Mac's startup mode by enabling verbose mode. Instead of seeing the usual Apple logo and grey screen when your Mac boots, you would see an output of the log files as the Mac processes. If I now go to the login window, you will see the message that we set through Onyx. In addition to changing the message, I'm going to also change the background of the login window. Now if I show the login window this time, you will see the different background. Like many options within Onyx, you will always have a Restore Defaults button on the bottom right hand side. Lastly, Onyx can give you information about your Mac that you would otherwise need to open System Profiler for. Onyx will display the specifications of your Mac. So as well as finding out your processor speed, you will see options such as video memory, actual physical memory within your Mac, how much of it is in use, and also how much disk space you have available. Onyx is an extremely capable and very comprehensive utility that allows you to customise a great many parts of your Mac. Remember, Onyx has a great help guide and we do recommend reading that in advance before you start using Onyx. We hope you've enjoyed this screencast, and if you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments below.